Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. Today's episode, the question of the day is, what causes chronic headaches following a concussion? And this is an important one because headaches are the most common symptom following concussions. And there are a lot of things that can cause it, a lot of areas either in the head or the neck or in the brain um, that can cause these chronic headaches. And um, most people that come in to see us, we're seeing them for headaches, but they also have other complaints, and that's the reason why they came in. They maybe could handle the, the chronic headache, and it just, um, there are other things that, that brought them in. But headaches are one of the most common, and we can help them. And so I want to share one article here. It's called Chronic Post-Traumatic Headache, Clinical Findings and Possible uh, Mechanisms. It's a special issue article um, by this Ruth Deferin out of the Department of Physical Therapy. Uh, the article is in the Journal of Manual and Manipulative Therapy from 2014. So it is a relatively older article, um, but I like it because it has some, some good photos and it talks about a lot of things that I would like to talk about. So. Um, basically here we have at the top chronic post-traumatic headaches or CPTHA as will be referred to the rest of the article is the most frequent complaint after traumatic brain injury and dramatically affects quality of life and function and a lot of people don't even seek treatment for it um, but we want to ensure that you know if people do seek treatment we can help them um, and so after a headache uh, there are a lot of you know clinical features uh, we can do different studies to look at the different types of pain. Basically, what he came down to is the evidence of dysfunctional pain modulation was observed um, in these patients. Basically, they either have what's called um, lack of sensation or too much pain sensation. And so chronic post-traumatic headache can result in damage to intra or pericranial tissues, so tissues that are within the brain, like the brain, or in the head, like the brain or pericranial, so just like outside it, like different muscles in the head or neck, um, it causes chronic sensitization. Alternatively, um, it could also be caused by central pain, so due to damage to brain structure specifically that involved in pain processing. So if we don't know how to properly process pain and then inhibit it, which there are mechanisms in the brain to do, then this can result in this chronic pain-like uh, headache. So let's go down here. Um, I think we're going to go right to the photo. Okay, so here are possible areas that a chronic headache after a concussion can come. So we have the neck, 76%. We have the back of the head, 53%. Uh, the temples is about 82. Top of the head, 29%. The forehead is 76. And then behind the eyes are 47. Now, all of these areas can be referral points for different muscles. So muscles in your neck can come around here and refer to the back of the eye, can refer to the temples. Muscles in the very back part of the neck can refer up here into the, uh, into the eye, as well as into the back of the head. Uh, muscles, so that you have a temporalis muscle that is involved with chewing. That can also refer from here down into the teeth or the eyes. Um, more muscles in your jaw, so a master muscle, and then two that are pretty deep, your pterygoids, those also refer up here into the top of the head. Um, and so all of these could be muscular related, but it's basically muscular related where these trigger points in the muscle, these points that when you touch them, they cause referral of pain. This basically is showing a dysfunctional nervous system, a dysfunctional uh, problem in the brain that is causing these muscular tensions leading to these headaches. Um, so besides the location of the headaches, there are different possibilities here. And so we have tension type like headaches, we have migraine like, cluster like, and cervical jet. And so tension type is normally like squeezing down, um, which can be caused by emotional stress, tension. Uh, migraine like is typically one sided, generally it's pounding and throbbing. Things that can bring on our physical activity, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity, 
Cluster-like headaches are also can be unilateral. Um, generally, they're behind the eye or around the eye, and then alcohol can also affect it. Um, and then it generally causes like, a lot of crying and um, runny nose. And then sarcoidogenic, it says mainly unilateral here. I've seen uh, both sides for sure. And generally it starts in the neck and then it spreads to other areas, uh, whether it's the eyes, um, over the head, uh, the temples, any kind of uh, areas like that. Okay, and then there is a, another photo. So here I wanna talk about this little diagram. So what's proposed here is that traumatic brain injury can cause damage to multiple areas. First one, damage to cranial and neck structures. So actually damage to the, to the skull, to the neck, whether it be muscles or that be uh, bones and the, the joints there. This can cause neurogenic inflammation. It can cause hyperexcitability of the receptors that are in these areas. And this leads to chronic pain, spontaneous pain, this allodynia, so um, basically an increase in pain response, hyperalgesia, where you have a sensi uh, higher sensitivity to pain. Uh, and then this causes a chronic post-traumatic headache. Other places, so this is more in the peripheral nervous system at the receptor level, so on the skin or the muscles and connective tissue. Then here in the middle, we have damage to actual pathways within the brain, whether that be in the spinal cord, in the brain stem, or other areas in the brain. And so damage to the spinal thalamic and thalamocortical pathways, these are pathways that bring up pain or bring up things that inhibit pain, or damage to the function of the pain inhibition pathways. So these are pathways that go from the brain down to the spinal cord to inhibit pain transmission. And if we have damage to these, this can again lead to hyperexcitability, hyperreactivity of neurons in the central nervous system, leading to the spontaneous pain. And then lastly, this mechanism, uh, he mentions PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder, um, but it could also be just a more anxiety, depression, pain, because it's catastrophizing. So basically that once chronic pain happens, there becomes a neural, or once pain happens and it becomes chronic, this neuroplastic process has built this habit loop of, of pain constantly happening, and then that creates that hypersensitivity. Once people understand that what pain is, and we can teach them what pain is, um, and how it can be good for your body to, to feel pain, but sometimes there can be pain without actually a, um, a problem or a source. And once we can teach that, we can lessen anxiety, lessen depression, a lot of times this headache will decrease and go down. Um, and so these are possible mechanisms displayed here in the article. Um, other ones that, that are not here are problems with vestibular structures. Vestibular structures can cause the eyes to move when your eyes are closed. Therefore, during the day, you're trying to prevent your eyes from moving. And so in order to keep your eyes on target, and this is not as efficient for the brain, this is very taxing and can cause uh, muscular tone, muscular changes in the neck and the head, leading to headaches. So I really wanted to emphasize those points um, because obviously chronic headaches are very common, and especially after concussions. And it may not even be realize that it was after a concussion until later on. So I just wanna point out two specific points here that, that he comes to in the clinical implications. And that's that uh, when looking at chronic post-traumatic headaches, comprehensive exam of the signs and symptoms of the head and neck are advised. So the head and the neck, um, and that's outside the head and neck, but also within the brain as we do every single day. Um, and then individually tailored multidisciplinary treatment seems to be the optimal approach for individuals who suffer from chronic post-traumatic headaches. So we're not just going to um, adjust you, give you some neck exercises. Um, we are going to look at specific areas in your brain and find out which areas need the most work, and we're going to rehab them. And by rehabbing them, that can improve the overall efficiency of the brain. It can improve those pain pathways that may be a little damaged, therefore improve the chronic post-traumatic headache overall. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think this is just an important one because we treat a lot of concussions and uh, headaches are the most common complaint that we see along with then dysautonomia and other things that 
will cause headaches as well. And so uh, I, I really, I really like this one. I hope you guys did too. Uh, please leave your comments and questions below if you have any. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thank you and have a great day. Stay healthy.